Hello, and welcome to QuantPy. In the previous presentation, we analyzed the arithmetic Brownian motions SDE. We gave a step-by-step -step derivation of its solution, and we also covered its probability distributions, including mean, variance, and autocovariance. We then outlined with a real example how the process can be calibrated using historical data, and we then showed how to simulate its paths and probability density. In this video, we are going to cover the same concepts for the geometric Brownian motion, which as we said before, is the most popular SDE in mathematical finance. But before we start with the geometric Brownian, could you help answer a couple of questions about the arithmetic Brownian motion please? The first question is, what is the probability that the arithmetic Brownian motion value at time t will be negative? The second question relates to the autocorrelation. We derived formulae for the variance and covariance of the arithmetic Brownian motion. Could you derive formula for the autocorrelation of the process? Answers in the comments please. Let's start with the geometric Brownian now. Recall that the SDE of the geometric Brownian motion is as follows. It is similar to the arithmetic Brownian, but the drift and diffusion are now proportional to the value of the process. That complicates things a bit. In the arithmetic Brownian, the variables were nicely separated, so we could just integrate. Here we will need to use a slightly different approach, to see how can we proceed. Assume for a moment that the random component is not there, so we end up with a deterministic differential equation. We can move x to the left, so we end up with x on the left and t on the right. The left hand side now is just the differential of log of x, remember derivative of, log of x, is 1 over x, notice we are assuming x cannot take zero value, otherwise the world ends. We can now integrate both sides easily. Motivated by this, we try a solution of the log form for our stochastic differential equation. Applying Ito's lemma to both sides, we get. Substituting for dx, and dx squared, we get. Factoring out dt, we get a nice version that we can integrate from 0 to t. Exponentiating both sides, we get the desired solution. We can also take x0 inside the exponential. This is because the log and the exponential are inverse functions of each other, so exponential of log of x is just x. We now characterize its probability distribution. We reproduce the SDE and its solutions, in both forms first. Recall that if Z is, normally distributed with some given mean and variance, then the exponential of Z is, log normally distributed with the same mean and variance. An easy way to remember this is, to say that Y is, log normal, because its log is normal. Now the expression in the exponent of our geometric Brownian motion is, very much like the arithmetic Brownian solution, we saw in the previous presentation, with an extra term. So we know that it is normally distributed with mean and variance, very similar to those of the arithmetic Brownian. Thus our solution being an exponential of our normal is, log normally distributed with the same mean and variance. Notice the mean and variance here are the mean and variance of the expression in the exponent, and not of x. This is the standard terminology for log normal distribution, though it does sound confusing in the beginning. The mean and variance of x are different that we are going to derive now. Before we start, it is helpful to recall the formula for the moment generating function of a normal variable. This is because a moment generating function is, more or less, the expected value of the exponential of the variable, and so is the solution of the geometric Brownian motion. Recall that if z is standard normal, then its moment generating function is as follows. It can be easily derived by noting that the expected value of the function of a standard normal variable is the integral of the function times the density of the standard normal. Combining the two exponents, we get the term in the numerator looks like a squared minus 2 times a times b, as in the famous a minus b squared formula. So if we add square of t, then we get the complete square. Writing it as square, taking the constant term out of the integral, we get the term starting with the 1 over 2 pi is the total probability of a normal distribution with mean t and variance 1 and so should equal 1 and we are done. 
we can now generalize this formula to get the moment generating function of a general normal variable. Recall that if z is standard normal, then a plus b times z is also normal, but with mean a and variance b squared. So we can write the moment generating function of a non standard normal as follows. Taking the constant out of the expectation, using the moment generating function of the standard normal, pretending t is replaced by t times b, we get. Now here comes the trick. We can easily see that the exponent t times a plus b times z is like a normal distribution with mean a times t and variance b squared times t squared. We can jump to the conclusion that the expected value of the exponential of a normal variable is is the exponential of its mean plus half its variance. This result will come in very handy when we set to derive the mean variance and covariance of the geometric Brownian process, which we do next. We are now ready to tackle the mean variance and covariance of our geometric Brownian process. Let's reproduce what we have established so far. We showed that if x follows a geometric Brownian motion, then its solution can be written as follows. Which is like the exponential of a normal variable. We also showed that if y is normally distributed, then the expected value of its exponential can be written as the exponential of its mean plus half its variance. Now to compute the expected value of x, we just plug its mean and variance into this formula. The terms containing sigma squared cancel, and we are left with this simple expression. Now to compute its variance, recall that variance can be written as follows. The second term is just the square of the expected value that we just calculated. The first term is easy to calculate, thanks to our magic formula. Plugging in the mean and variance. And simplifying, we get. Substituting the two terms into the variance expression. And factoring out the common term, we get the variance formula. We now derive the covariance formula. Recall that the covariance of xt and xs can be written as follows. Essentially, it is the covariance between the value of the process at time t and another time s. Also recall that the covariance arises because a stochastic process is defined over time, so it is like a collection of random variables, and a collection needs covariance. The second term is easy. It is just the product of the means of the process at t and s. We already have the formula for the mean, which we reproduce here. The mean at s will be the same with t replaced by s. Simplifying, we get the formula for the product of the means. For the first term, we just substitute the solutions of the process at t and at s, taking the constant out of the expectation and separating the sigma t and sigma s terms in anticipation of some lucky simplification later, we get. Now calculating the expectation of the exponential of the linear combination of the two Brownian is not easy as they are not independent. If we assume that s is smaller than t, then we can rearrange this expression into two independent Brownian. We could have equally chosen that t is smaller, and the calculations would have been similar. We can now write the value of the Brownian at t as the sum of its value at s, and the change in its value from s to t. Rearranging, we can now see that the two components are independent. Increment from s to t is independent of its value at s, as you may recall from the definition of the Brownian motion. We can thus write the expectation of the product of the two as the product of their expectations. We are in the home territory now. We know how to compute the expectation of the exponential of a normal variable. We just have to apply it twice. Here is the step-by-step -step calculation of each, just in case. We again split out the two sigma terms, still hoping for the lucky cancellation. We can now substitute this back into the bigger expression and we can now see that the terms with sigma squared t cancel and the ones with the sigma squared s lose their twos. 
we can now substitute this final expression, and the one from the previous box into the covariance formula, to get. Factoring out the common term, we get the result. We now move on to the probability density. The problem is as follows. We have a normally distributed variable, with mean, mu, and variance, sigma square. We know the normal density, which is as follows. Now the task is to find the probability density of the exponential of z. Let's denote the function that transforms z into x by g. The inverse of g will transform x into z. In this case, g is the exponential function, while the inverse of g is the log function. The derivative of z with respect to x can be easily calculated. Now recall the random variable transformation formula from statistics. Substituting the inverse function, we get. Now substituting the density of z, evaluated at log of x, and the derivative of z with respect to x, we get. As the exponential is positive, we can get rid of the absolute value. This is the log normal density we were after. Let's recollect the results we have established so far, before moving to the calibration. We started with the geometric Brownian SDE, and we showed that its solution can be written as follows. We then derived the formulae for its mean, variance, and covariance. We also shows that the solution is log normally distributed and derive the formula for its density. As in the arithmetic Brown in motion presentation, we will now try to get some feel for the geometric Brown in motion process by using it to model real financial data. Again, we will use FTSE 100 index daily data over 17 business days. As mentioned in the previous video, normally this analysis would be carried out on multiple years of data but we have chosen this short period, so that the data fits on the screen. Now, for geometric Brownian, we model the log returns, so let's generate the return series. It is simply, the log of today value, minus, the log of the previous day value. Repeating the calculations for all days, we get the log return series. Again, we recall the mean and variance formulae. Applying these formulae to our series, we get the mean and variance of the series. The standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. Now, as per the geometric Brownian assumptions, each of the daily log return is normally distributed with this mean and variance. We are interested in the annual returns, as in the arithmetic Brownian, if we assume that there are 252 trading days in a year, that is roughly 365 minus 104 weekend days and about 910 public holidays. And if we also assume that the daily log returns are independent, we can quickly determine the distribution of the annual returns as the sum of 252 normal variables. Mean is just the sum of the 252 means, each of which is constant, so it is essentially 252 times the mean of the daily returns, variance, of the sum of independent variables, is just the sum of their variances. So, we multiply it by 252, as well. So to annualize the mean and variance of our daily log returns, we just multiply them by 252. Standard deviation gets multiplied by the square root of 252. Annualizing the mean and variance of the daily returns is sometime approached from a different angle. The SDE parameters can be interpreted as the annual drift and the annual variance. As you may know, in continuous time, time is measured in years. That means t equal to 1 is 1 year. One day, which we denote by delta t, would then be 1 divided by 252, and daily mean would be annual mean divided by 252 or annual mean times delta t, so to compute annual mean, we divide the daily mean by the delta t, which is 1 over 252. Dividing by 1 over 252, is the same thing as multiplying by 252, so the answer is the same as before, but it can look different when you encounter it for the first time. Same logic goes for the variance. In the arithmetic Brownian, we were finished with the parameters estimation by this stage. However, the geometric Brownian introduces a slight complication. To see that, 
let's reproduce the estimates of the mean and variance. We will round the estimates for convenience. Now, let's recall the solution of the geometric Brownian process. We see that the mean of the log return is actually the drift, minus, half the variance. Variance remains unaltered, though notice we are talking variance of log returns here, as opposed to variance of simple differences in the arithmetic case. Setting the mean of the geometric Brownian equal to the empirical mean of the log returns, and solving for, mu, we get the drifts. Substituting the drift and the standard deviation into the geometric Brownian SDE, we get. And substituting the drift and the variance into the solution of the SDE, we get. Whilst the parameters estimation process looks simple, it can be shown that this approach is consistent with the ordinary least square and maximum likelihood approaches, as we demonstrated in the previous video. Now that we have the parameters of the stochastic process, we can simulate its paths and probability density. Let's reproduce a solution. It gives the value of the process at time t, given the value of the process at time, zero. We can generalize this to an arbitrary start time t and end time t plus delta t, meaning we are generating the value of the process after an interval of length delta t. We can then recursively generate the path of the process. As in the arithmetic Brownian motion, we replace the change in Brownian by square root of delta t times the standard normal. This is because the change in Brownian motion over delta t is normally distributed with mean zero and variance delta t. Square root of delta t times standard normal also has a mean of zero, and variance of delta t, so the two represent the same thing. Now we can use this to simulate the daily values of the index, starting at x0, and recursively applying the above equation, with delta t equal to 1 over 252. We start with 7318.5, which was the latest value of the index. We then generate, a random value, of the standard normal, and then plug it into this equation to get the simulated value, one day ahead. We keep, recursively generating the values of the process, one day at a time here, until we reach, our desired maturity, which we choose to be 50 days. Here are a few sample paths. Also recall that the value of the process at any time is log normally distributed with the following parameters. So we can also generate the probability distribution of the process at any time using the log normal distribution density. We do it for the terminal date of our simulation, which is 50 days. Let's plot the distribution of the process over time. Notice the probability distribution is a function of both t and x, but to highlight the key points, as in the previous video, instead of creating the whole 3D surface, we will just plot its density at discrete points in time, 3 months, 6 months, 9 months, and 1 year. Here are the distributions. As you can see the distribution drift, to the right as the horizon increases, this is because the drift is positive, so we would expect the process to drift upwards over time. The second thing to notice is that the distribution flattens as the horizon increases, the values are more concentrated, around the trended mean at 3 months, but spreads as we increase t. This is because the variance increases with time, and you may recall that the higher the variance, the flatter the distribution becomes. We hope you enjoyed the presentation, and we will see you in the next video, where we cover the same concepts for the ornstein ullenbeck process, which is, probably, the second most popular SDE in mathematical finance, and probably the most commonly encountered process in job interviews.